you guys have been submitting a lot of fantastic questions on our form spring, and I wanted to use this episode to answer one of my favorites. A viewer asked what our favorite roast chicken recipe is. I would say my favorite way of doing a roast chicken is more of a method than a recipe. <laughs> This week on Working Class Foodies. When I roast a chicken, I like to take a page from Thomas Keller's book and keep it as simple as possible. Chicken, salt and pepper, and some fresh herbs. That's all I need to make my roast chicken delicious. Roast chicken is a great recipe for beginners. It's simple and approachable and actually really hard to screw up. So if you've never made a roast chicken before, what are you waiting for? One of the most important things when you're shopping for your chicken is to make sure that it's a good size. Basically, you don't want your chicken looking like David Wright. To roast a chicken, first thing you have to do is leave it on the counter until it reaches room temperature. Then remove anything that's inside the cavity of the chicken, usually a little piece of the neck, maybe some gizzards. Set those aside. In a future episode, we're going to be going over how to turn these parts into a delicious chicken stock. Rinse off your chicken, inside and out, and then pat it down dry. You want it to be very, very dry. You want to pat out the cavity and you want to pat it like the little wing armpit joints between the thigh and the hip. Then preheat your oven to 375. Okay. Then place your chicken, breast side up, on a roasting rack in a roasting pan, and season the chicken's cavity with a good dose of salt and a little bit of fresh cracked pepper, and stuff it with some fresh herbs. I like to use thyme. To truss the chicken, bring a length of twine under the chicken's back. Bring the twine over the tops of the drumsticks and sort of loop it like a figure eight around the ends of the drumsticks. Pull the string tight to bring the drumstick ends together so that they overlap a little bit over the cavity and tie them down. Tuck the wing tips under the shoulders, the chicken kind of doing one of these. Then sprinkle a generous amount of coarse sea salt all over the chicken's skin, following with a little bit of cracked fresh pepper. Roast for 30 minutes. So our chicken's been in the oven roasting for about 30 minutes at 375 degrees. I'm going to take it out and flip it over so that the skin on the back of the chicken can get a little bit crispy too. The back side of my chicken is going to roast for 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to start making my sides. I like to keep parboiled potatoes in the fridge so that I can grab them and just cook them up whenever I want a potato side dish. I took them out and quartered them, and then I put them in a pan with hot oil and some smashed whole garlic cloves. I seasoned my potatoes and garlic with salt, pepper, and I let them roast until they were brown and crispy. After 20 minutes of roasting the back of my chicken, I flipped it back over to re-crisp the skin on the breast. You know your chicken is done roasting when you remove it and the juices run clear. 20 more minutes of letting the breast side of the chicken roast and my juices were running clear. Remove the chicken to a cutting board and let it rest. Don't cover it with tin foil. All you'll do is get the skin soggy and lose all that nice crispness that you had. The best compliment for a good roast chicken is a delicious pan juice. My favorite pan juice right now uses a lot of mustard. Pour off the excess grease from the chicken. Make sure you don't pour it down the drain. I pour mine into an old metal can and once it gets too full, I throw it out. Set your roasting pan over two burners on medium and then deglaze the pan, which means pour liquid into the pan and scrape up all of the little crispy bits of chicken or whatever that fell to the bottom during the roasting. You can deglaze with chicken stock or wine or beer, but I just use water to deglaze. It's fine, it tastes just as good. Then I added in two tablespoons of mustard. This is my new favorite mustard. It's a local mustard made by McClure's Pickle Company, and they use Brooklyn Brewery's brown ale in it. But if you don't have it, you can use your favorite mustard. It'll be perfect. She can fly in her reflection Carving the chicken is usually the part that people find the most daunting. It's really not that hard. To separate off the thigh and the drumstick, just pull the leg to the side gently and you'll see where the thigh meets the hip. And just carve through that joint very gently. There you go, thigh and drumstick. To carve off the breast, carve along one side of the sternum all the way down to the ribcage and then carve along the ribcage and then just carve through the shoulder joint. And that's it, you've got a French breast of chicken. Humphrey, high five. I serve my chicken with a side of garlic roast potatoes and a simple side salad, and of course, a healthy dose of my mustard jus.
it. High five. High five. What I love about this method is that the skin gets crispy and the white meat and the dark meat cook evenly. So you don't end up with overcooked white meat and raw drumsticks. Everything is even so everybody gets a great piece of chicken. The key is to use a generous amount of salt and let the salt, the fat, and the dry heat of the oven do all the work for you. So the total price for a roast chicken with mustard jus, garlic roasted potatoes, and a simple side salad was $16.50, but that fed four people, which brings the total price down to $4.13 a person. So, anonymous form spring questioner, that is how I made my roast chicken, and I hope that answers your question. Now it's your turn. Write in, let us know how you make your favorite roast chicken. We'd love to see your recipes, and of course, if you have a question for us, submit it to our form spring. We'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies.